you doing out here? Don't you know there's a storm coming up? You should be back at the farm. What's the matter, Flicker? Don't you know me? It's Ken. Come on, girl. Come on. Come on. <laughs> A cold. Flicker, you've had your cold. But it's white. It just can't be white. Oh, I'm sorry, Flicker. I didn't mean it. It's a beautiful cold. Honest, it is. Hello, fella. Come on. Come on. Oh, I'm not going to hurt you. Come on. Here. I'd better get both of you out of here before this storm breaks. Hold oh, on. Come on, fella. He'll follow, Flicker. Come on, boy. Hurry up. Hey, come on. All right, you want to be so stubborn. <laughs> come on. Come on, that's it. Come on. Hurry up. Add up, boy. Come home from town yet, Kenny? Josh. Yeah. Josh. What's the matter, Kenny? Flicker's had a cold. Huh? Good. Sure it is. I mean, no, it isn't. She's down in the gorge near the lake, and the cold's stuck in the wash. Well, why didn't you say so? Come on, we saddle a couple of horses. Josh, if we don't get there before the storm breaks, anything can happen. Nothing to worry about. They've been born in colts on the range a long time now. Here. Put this on. I haven't got time. Take time. Your father skinned me good if you catch pneumonia again. I'm not going to catch anything. Listen. Rain. Yeah. That gully will be a river. The cold will drown. Come on. <laughs> Well, just don't stand there. Come on. Hey, Kenny. Oh. Mind out, Gus. You'll choke him. I'll help you. Come on. Come on here. 
I never saw such stubborn little devil. He's not stubborn. He's just scared and high-spirited. That's the name. Go on, Flicker. Go on. Over there. Morning, Kenny. Morning. Hi, Sonny. This fella had a pretty hard night. He's beautiful, isn't he, Gus? I wouldn't go so far to say that. But your father liked him, Ebb. He's got to like him, so I'll be able to train him and enter him in the races and run him myself. Races? You think maybe little fella can run? Sure he can run. He's got to be the greatest racehorse in the world. I'll enter him at Santa Anita and Hialeah and, and the Kentucky Derby, and I bet he wins every one of them. You got it all figured out, ain't you, Kenny? Yeah. Well, I hope you're right. We can use a little good luck around here, eh, Beth? Cam! That sounds like my Hildy. Cam! You must think you can have breakfast right this minute. Thank you, Hildy. You're welcome. Gus! Gus, you didn't tell Dad about the cold, did you? Why, no, Kenny. You asked me not to. Thanks, Gus. Why don't you want anyone to know about it? Because, Hildy, it's a very special cold, and I want to surprise Dad. Oh, well, I won't tell him, Kim. Good. Oh, Ken! Are you going to surprise your dad now? Shh! Hildy, can't you ever mind your own business? Oh, I can. But it isn't much fun. Saddle buck, Tim. Then we'll go. Dad. Good morning, young fella. Good morning. Going into breakfast? Yes, sir. Dad, what would you do if you had all the money you wanted? All the money I want? Sure, all you want. Well, now, let's see. I, uh, I guess I'd take your mother to New York and buy her a fur coat and a diamond ring. Women like pretty things, you know. Then we'd probably take a cruise to South America, see what kind of horses they have down there. Go on, then what would you do? Well, if you really want to know, I'd buy some more brood mares. I build fences around the place, fix it up like your mother and I have planned. Make it the finest ranch in the West. Say, what's this all about, anyway? Well, Dad, I've got an idea that's going to make us a lot of money, maybe even rich. You have? Well, fine. It's Charlie Sargent. Hello, Charlie. How are you? Hiya, Rob. Fine. Hiya, Ken. Oh, hello. Oh, Major, how are you? Fine. Glad to see you again, McLaughlin. Hello, young man. Hello. Come in. Come in. Thanks. How's the road? Storm do much damage? Only got stuck once. Well, good morning, Charlie. Hello, Nell. And Major Harris, I'm glad to see Thank you. Thank you. What are you doing out here in the wilderness? I'm on another buying tour. I came over to see if your husband had any more horses to sell. Afraid not. You got the cream in the crop last time. We were just going to have breakfast. Won't you join us? No, thanks. Just the same. Wouldn't think of it. Not much. What do you think Charlie came over for? He can smell home cooking 20 miles away. <laughs> <laughs> You're not fooling. Come on. Can bring down that chair. Major, will you sit there? Thank and you. Charlie there, please. Thank you. Robin, you pour the orange juice. Mm -hmm. A couple of glasses, Ken. Yes, sir. You know, McLaughlin, those horses of yours were the talk of the fort. Huh. They ought to be. Who ever heard of selling hunters and polo ponies for 200 bucks a head? Well, that's standard army prices. Well, I wouldn't have taken the loss like that. But then, I'm not an old West Point man. You're a little sore because those would-be racers of yours aren't good enough for the army. Not good enough? I'll have you know I've got the finest horses this side of the Mississippi. Now, take Appalachian, for instance. Oh, Charlie, not Appalachian again. And why not? There's 60 generations of racers behind him, and every one of his cults is a winner. That's what I like about you, Charlie. You're so modest. Can I help it if my horse is the greatest stallion in the country? Greater than the albino? The albino? Well... Yeah, now there was a horse for you. Who did he belong to? Nobody. Drifted over here from Montana, nearly drove the ranchers crazy. He was wild. Wild as they come. The most beautiful stallion I ever saw. He never could find out where he lived. But every summer, for five or six years, he used to come down out of the hills and raid our herds while they were grazing in the lower pastures. <laughs> Drive off as many mares as he could round up. The ranch's losses were getting pretty heavy. He was very particular, too. He selected only the best mares. Well, 
Any stallion that tried to stop him was in for a fight. He killed several of the finest horses in this country. He was a robber baron if there ever was one. King of them all. We were all hunting for him one time or another. We could never get close enough to lay a rope on him. Whatever became of him? Nobody knows. Disappeared four or five years ago. Hasn't been seen since. He sounds more like a legend than a real horse. He was real enough. He got into Rob's herd once. Ken's mare Flicker was side by him. There's McLaughlin. Here are the eggs you wanted. Thank you, Hildy. You're welcome. Ken. I didn't know about the surprise yet. Hildy, I told you. I didn't say anything about the cold. The cold? What cold? That's what I wanted to tell you. Flicker's had a phone. She has? Oh, Ken, that's wonderful. It's down at the barn. Let's go see it. Fine. Come along, gentlemen. I'll show you a coat that even Mr. Sergeant could be proud of. I'll get him out, Dad, so you can have a good look at him. Good. Gus! Gus! Help me get the coat out. Dad wants to see it. You stay back, Lily. This coat will be either black or soft. Right banner, and he always sighs true. Come on. Come on. Ken's having a little trouble. Well, well, so Banner always sires true. He always has. Maybe Banner isn't the horse Rob thinks he is. Now, if that had been Appalachian... Oh, you and your Appalachian. I just can't understand it. White coat. There's nothing wrong with the white coat. He's just as good as any other. Of course. Whoa, whoa there! Whoa! Come on, whoa there! Come back! Come back! Come back! He's a goblin! That's what he is! He looks just like a goblin! <laughs> you keep out of this! You hear me? You keep out of this! He's a goblin! Ken, he's not a goblin. He's a racehorse, a thoroughbred racehorse. A racehorse? My banner, out of flicker. It takes a racer to sire a racer, Ken. He was sired by a racer. But banner isn't a racer, Ken. I know. Hey, just a minute, young man. You mean banner's not his father? No, sir, he isn't. Well, then who did sire this colt? <coughs> Appalachian. Appalachian? Mr. Sergeant Stallion? Yes, sir. That jug-headed coat by Appalachian? <laughs> I don't believe it. But it's so, Mr. Sergeant. Honest, it is. Now whose horse doesn't sire true? Ken, what is this all about? Well, Mom, I've always wanted a racer. Mr. Sergeant said what a wonderful horse Appalachian was. So I took Flick over to his ranch and turned her loose in the pasture. You took her over to my ranch? Yes, sir. But you know what it costs to have a coat sired by a famous stallion, son? Yes, dear. Then how'd you expect to pay, Mr. Sergeant? Out of my winnings. Mr. Sergeant said that Appalachian's colts always win. Guess he's got you there, Charlie. You asked for it. Me and my big mouth. Okay, son. Just forget about the money. You don't owe me a cent. What's more, if you want to register the coat, I'll give you a certificate. Gosh, thanks, Mr. Sergeant. What I can't understand is how come that colt's pure white when my stallion's cold black? Maybe he takes after his grandfather through Flicker. That's it. He's a throwback. A throwback to the albino. If he inherits any of the traits of that wild devil, you'll have a tough time trying to make anything out of him. not loco. He's high-spirited. Come on, Ken. 
tell you, Dad, they don't brand race horses. You have to have some identifying mark out on the range. But I've already notched his hoof. All right, we'll put it under his mane where it doesn't show. Come on, Gus, bring the distemper shot. Has Goblin got this temper? Of course not. You give him the shot so he won't get it. Now, boss, that's the last one. Good. All right, let him up. It's all over, boy. Come along. You can turn them all out now, Ken. Okay. You better cut Flicker in her cold out, Gus. Ken don't want to ride Flicker. Sure, boss. Thanks a lot, Jack. We'll return the favor any time. Okay, Rod. I'm glad to have helped. Banner! You ready to take him out again? You are, huh? Well, that's fine. Take good care of the herd now, you understand? Banner! Come on, Banner! They're all yours. Take them away. <laughs> of you to let Flick and her coat go. Well, I don't exactly need her. Anyway, she has to take Goblin out to winter on the range. Don't worry about him. He's tough. You get along. I know, Dad. But he isn't like other colts. I'll say he isn't. All the colts I've ever seen act like they're tied to their mothers. They follow the mares and do everything they do. That young fellow will want to go off on his own. He'll want to investigate everything for himself. Won't make any difference whether it's a coyote or a porcupine.
storms come down from the hills and the herd takes shelter in some deep canyon. That little fool horse will want to stick his nose right in the wind and fight back. The banner won't stand for any nonsense. Gobbler may be the grandson of the great albino, but the banner will be just another colt. Watch. Where'd you get it? Don't bother me now. I'm timing Goblin. Bought it with my own money. Oh. Look at the size of the Goblin. <laughs> Look out. Here they come. You better look out, too. Well, son, what do you think of your horse now? He's great. Dad, how far is it to the top of that knoll? Oh, a couple of hundred yards. Well, that's wonderful. He made it in almost nothing flat in, in, in 15 seconds. <laughs> Say, Tim, cut out the goblin. Put him in that other corral, will you? Okay. Thank you. Hey, boss. Hello. Hello, Dad. guys. Mrs. Boss, Taggart and Sky High and Brownie's missing. They're missing? Rob, they're your prize mayor. Maybe the wolves got them. But those cougars. If they did, we would have found sign. Well, what could have happened to them? Oh, they probably strayed. We'll go out tomorrow and find them. No use, boss. Tim and me looked everywhere for them. You sure? Yeah, boss. Well, I guess that settles it. Yep, that settles it. Thanks, Gus. Come on, Hildy. Rob, the herd's so small now, we can't afford to lose those mares. Well, we'll just have to buy some others. They're so expensive. With Ken's schooling and Gus and Tim to pay and the taxes. Well, we'll figure it out some way. Now, don't you start to fret. Things are going to be all right. Okay, Goblin, you can quit your fooling. The way things are going around here, it's about time you and I got to work. That's the boy. Come on. Oh, so you're going to be that way, huh? Bet you miss him. Hildy, stay out of here. Want to get yourself killed? By that jug head. Do as I tell you. You'd miss. I won't miss next time. What did I tell you? Ken, look out! Oh! Oh! Get 
down! Mr. McLaughlin! Mr. McLaughlin! Come on. Like that. Pretty good. Now let me see you pull that off. Well, what's going on here? Oh, nothing much. I'm just breaking goblin, that's all. Are you sure it isn't the other way around? Of course not. Why, I got it practically eating out of my hand. Yeah, I can see what you mean. Yeah. Well, all I need is just a little more time. Here, boy. Look. Sugar. You're not supposed to have it, but I know you'll like it. There. Good, isn't it? Yes, sir. You and I are going to get along fine. If you'll just listen to reason, you'll be a racehorse before you know it. Now, take it easy, son. This isn't going to hurt you. It's only a halter. Don't tell me we have to go through all this foolishness again. You know who's boss, so behave yourself. Ho! Duck on you! Cut it out! You want me to take this halter shank to you? Now, Goblin, I'm trying to be patient. Ho! Stop it! Come back here, you crazy brown. Come back here. Okay, be like your grandfather. See if I care. Of all the mean-tempered, stubborn, ungrateful, good-for-nothing idiots. And? Losing your temper is no way to train a horse, son. I'm not going to train him. Now, wait a minute. You started this. You've got to see it through. You can't quit in the middle of a job just because you're having a little trouble. It isn't little. I can't teach Goblin anything. And what's more, I think he hates me. He hated you. He wouldn't let you in the same corral with him. No horse is going to be broken without putting up a scrap. Every wrangler has to expect that. I know, Dad. But one minute Goblin's as gentle as a kitten. And then... Just when I think I'm getting somewhere with him, he turns out wrong. That's because Goblin has a problem, too. He can't make up his mind whether he wants to be like Flicko or the Albino. He's fighting himself like most of us do. But he's too good a horse to throw away just when a little patience and understanding may see him through. I want you to go find Goblin and bring him back. Yes, sir. Oh, just a minute, Ken. You better keep this. You might use it after all. Thanks, Dad. 
Quite a horse, don't you? Better watch out, here comes Banner. <laughs> That'll show you who's boss. So wild. Yeah, it'll be all right. Ken's getting to be a pretty good hand with horses. Broke Flicker, didn't he? The goblin isn't like Flicker. I know. This is no time to discourage him just when he's beginning to take an interest in the ranch. Besides, breaking goblins very apt to make a man of him. Dad! Dad! Dad, the albino's come back. He's raiding the herd. The albino? Oh, it couldn't be. The albino hasn't been around for years. But it's true, Dad. I saw him. He was running like the wind right into the herd. So that's what happened to the mares. Get Gus and Tim. Yes. Time to bring your guns. Traveling with him. That's fine. How are you taking some more of my mares? Dad, Goblin's gone with the albino. Gone with him? Sure. Here are his tracks. I told you I'd notched his hoof. If he gets near the mares, that albino will cut him to pieces. Well, come on. Turn north here. Heading for the Buckhorn Range, I bet. Yeah, come on. Albino has done it again, boss. But he just can't disappear off the face of the earth. There's a million canyons in this range. He could be in any one of them. Well, come on. Might as well go home. Glad to see you. 
Dad, he's hurt. Look at his flank. Jiminy, he's cut all up. He's been hit by a hoof and a mighty big one. He must have had a fight with the albino. Fight? Looks like he's been sideswiped. He's going to be all right, isn't he, Dad? It's not going to keep him from running. I don't know. Been pretty badly shaken up. My guess is he's going to be all right. Don't bother me, I'm busy. Well, whatever it is, I'll tell your mother if you don't tell me. So I guess you better tell me, huh? I'm going to sack Goblin. I've got to get him used to the blanket before I put the saddle on it. Ah, oh, you can't break a horse. Stay out of here. Goblin's dangerous. Anything's liable to happen. Oh, Goblin. You're a big boy now, so act your age. Sure it will. We're going to fight this thing out right now. Now look here, young man. There, you see? Didn't take me long to make him understand what the saddle blanket's for. He didn't understand. He just got tired. Wait till I put the saddle on him. Bet you he pulls the snubbing post up by its roots. You boy. Dangerous. When I climb aboard, you'll see a real fight. Oh, Goblin. Goodness sake, Goblin, don't act like an old cow. Give me some action. Watch. Oh, Ken, I could spank you. You don't suppose Ken set this up in favor of Goblin, do you? <laughs> Take him around one, son, and I'll time him. Okay, Mr. Sergeant. Charlie, it was nice of you to let Ken work out in the track. I'm as interested in that horse as he is. Why not? That's Appalachian's cold he's riding. <laughs> You're telling me. Ready, Ken? Yes, sir. Ready. Go! Come on, Gob. Let's go. Come on. Come on. Come on. Ken, be careful! What that horse needs is a pacemaker. He needs more than that. Put Joe up on Southern Bell. Joe up on Southern Bell. Now you know why mothers get gray. I told you that horse was unpredictable. He doesn't like people to tell him what to do. It makes him mad all over. Ken says he's just high-spirited. Uh-huh. Oh, isn't she beautiful? She can run, too. If Goblin can catch her, we'll know he's good. Oh, 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 baby. All set. Let her go! I don't 
know. He's catching up! He's catching up! Come on, Goblin. Come on! Come on, Goblin, run! Come on! Come on, Goblin! Come on, Goblin! Run! 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 What do you make, Charlie? What do you make? Forty-seven seconds. A half mile in forty-seven seconds. Forty-seven. Appalachian's cold. He did it, Kenny! He did it! He can run, can't he, Mr. Sergeant? I told you he could run. Sonny, you're going to enter Goblin in the Multnomah County races next year. And I'll help you get a jockey's license so you can ride him yourself. Gee, Mr. Sergeant. Uh, just a minute, Charlie. There's a handicap for three-year-olds just made for that horse. But you can't depend on him. Did you see him run? Sure, I saw him. But being able to run isn't enough. He's got to run when you want him to, not just when he feels like it. He'll be all right, Dad. I'll train him. I'll make a real racer out of him. Goblin's a racer! Goblin's a racer! Don't call him Goblin. He isn't a Goblin anymore. He needs a new name. You name him, Mom. You name him. Ken, I don't know. Go ahead. Let's see. Those Thunderheads. They're like white horses in the sky. How about calling him Thunderhead? I'd like to ask. That's a fine name for him. Thunderhead. Thunderhead. Still, it's going to look great, isn't it, Mom? We'll have to shorten the sleeves a little. Gee, it's one of you to do this for me. Oh, nonsense. But I want you to promise me something, young man. Sure. I want you to promise me you won't take any foolish chances. After all, you're not a professional jockey. I can ride, Mom. You know that. I know. But you will be careful, won't you? Sure. Put the truck in the barn, Gus. Okay, boss. Say, here. You go upstairs, dear. Get your report card. I want to talk to your father first. Alone. Okay, Mom. Hello, darling. Hello, honey. How'd the sale go? Pretty good. Pass took a whole lot. Well, that's the end of the thoroughbreds. Hey, Rob, I'm sorry you had to sell them. Sorry? Why? Nobody's interested in hunters and jumpers these days. Now we can concentrate on cavalry horses. Take a look at that, Mrs. McLaughlin. Should be enough to last us the rest of the year. And if we're careful, we might even be able to buy a couple of broodmares. Rob, that's wonderful, but do we have to buy them right now? Well, we ought to. Why? What's on your mind? Oh, nothing. Just a minute, young lady. What are you up to? Come on, out no, with it, out no, with it. No. Hello, Dad. Ken, when did you get here? This morning. I took the bus. I just couldn't wait. That's fine. You look pretty snappy in that uniform. Let's see it. Corporal McLaughlin reporting, sir. Corporal. So you got your stripes. Yes, sir. And that's not all. Here. Oh. The report card. Go on. Look at it. Mathematics, 92. Latin, 94. Composition, a hundred. No, aren't you proud? Proud? I'm dumbfounded. This is wonderful, Ken. Why all this sudden thirst for knowledge? Well, well... Go on, go on, tell him, dear. Well, Dad, I thought if I made good in school, you might lend me the money to enter Thunderhead in the Multnomah County races. Races? Here we go again. Well, Dad, Mr. Sergeant wrote and said he'd fix it so that I'd be able to ride in the race myself. Ken, I told you before, you can't depend on that horse. But he's all right now, Dad. He's just fine. And he might win. He will win. I just know he'll win. And if he does, it'll mean $5,000. Yes, Dad, and just think what we could do with all that money. It would help put Ken through college, and you could fix up the ranch the way you've always wanted. Now, I'd like to see that horse run as much as anybody. But with incidentals and everything, it would cost four or $500. <laughs> It's not that four or five hundred dollars would break us, but the way things are now, I, I, I just can't afford to take the risk. Yes, Dad. I'm sorry, son. Maybe things will be better next year. Okay, son. It was just an idea. Robbie's been counting on it, and he's worked so hard. What? What's that? Just a jockey shirt. A jockey shirt? A goose boy. I thought Ken might like it. What's 
that you have? Oh, just some finest marble hoof luster. I... I bought it to shine Thunderhead's hooves with. Hoof luster. Jockey's shirt. Well, I guess you got me outnumbered. You win. Oh, Rob. <laughs> Yes, that does it. It ought to. You can see your face in him. Hello, Dad. Thunderhead looks pretty good, doesn't he? You don't look so bad yourself. Check everything? Everything. I'll just have a look at the girth. I want you doing a nose dive in the middle of the track. Oh, I'll be all right. Sure you will. It's just like riding a Charlie Sergeant's ranch. Jackie's up. I guess that means me. Yep, Jackie's up. Now, don't let the crowd bother you, or the Jackie's either. And don't let them get you in a pocket. I won't. Just remember, there's not a better horse on that track, or a better rider. Thanks, Dad. Good luck, son. Your mother and I will be cheering for you. Ladies and gentlemen, the horses are coming out on the track for the sixth race. A victory handicap for three-year-old and upwards, going one mile. The first is five thousand dollars in added money. This event was won last year by Iron Mountain, owned by Mr. William Palmer. The horses are on parade. On the rail is Taku, ridden by Buddy Farnsworth. Molly R. with Jockey Connolly is next. Happy Days is number three with Jockey Clyde Jennings. Morning Star is number four with Jockey Robert Lloyd. The milk white horse is Thunderhead with its owner Ken McLaughlin in the saddle. Here's Ken! Yoo-hoo, Ken! Storm Warning is number seven with Jockey Walter Carter. Well, Mrs. McCrackman, what do you think of your son now? He looks awfully small down there, doesn't he? This is no time to start worrying. He can take care of himself, all right. Swinging door, written by jockey Kenneth Coppernold. Thunderhead looks next. like a million. I'll settle for 5,000. On the outside, a stepmother, written by jockey Howard Conley. Who does that black belong to, Charlie? That's Fleetway from the Johnson stable. Yeah, and he's liable to be a good horse. Not as good as Thunderhead, I bet you. <laughs> Fleetway, now the favorite in the race, is being ridden by jockey Bobby Thomas. The horses are going into position at the starting gate. Thunderhead is giving the starter and his assistants a bit of trouble. They're having a difficult time with Thunderhead. Now the horse is settling down. He's quiet. And Thunderhead is being led into position.
over the fans into the infield. He's uh, running away. Uh, 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 Local coyotes. Why did you do it? Why did you throw that race? I told you Mom and Dad were counting on you. Gus and Tim had money on you. So did Mr. Sergeant. Now you've ruined everything. Oh, stop it. I don't care if you are sorry. I'm through. Do you hear? Good and through. Thunderhead, what's the matter with your leg board? Just keep that leg bandaged till you get him home. Then have your own bet look at him. Right, Doc. He's going to come back next year and win. He's going to win a lot of races. He is going to run again. Isn't he, Doc? Doesn't look like it, son. A mode tendon can never be dependent on. It won't cripple him, Ken. He'll be as good as ever as a saddle horse. But he'll never be able to put on that burst to speed a racehorse needs to carry him across the finish line. I'm afraid Thunderhead's track days are over, Ken. Boss, another month he'd be good like new almost. Oh, that's fine. Say, uh, Gus, I, uh, was talking to Charlie Sargent in the races the other day. Yeah, boss? He, uh, tells me he has quite a lot of work over at his place. You know, what's the matter? The gate is sagging. He'll have been swinging again, I bet. You know, uh, things have been pretty slack around here. She got it all loose. Mr. Uh, Sergeant tells me he could use a couple of good hands at his place. Hang on, he's taking up. Will you hold up that in just a minute, boss? I thought maybe you and Tim might like to go to work for him. Yeah, boss. You know, with a herd as small as it is now, I can pretty well handle it myself. Besides, I... Well, I just can't afford to pay after the first of the month, Gus. I'll fix it, I bet. You didn't hear one word I said to you. Sure, boss. You said you couldn't pay us after the first of the month. Well? Well, that don't make no difference. Tim and me wouldn't be happy anyplace else. Yeah, I work pretty good now. Rob! Breakfast! Coming! Drink your orange juice. How do you want your eggs? Fried or scrambled? Fried, I guess. Where's Ken? Upstairs. He said he wasn't very hungry this morning. I think I better have a little talk with him. Oh, Rob. Hmm? Be nice to him. He's taking it pretty hard. Ready? Coming, Dad. Hurry up. We've got a big day in front of us. Got to get the hay in. We need forty dollars a ton this season. Forget it, son. Took a chance and lost, but that's all there is to it. But I'm so counted on his winning. I know. Now Thunderhead will never be able to run again. Ken, when I was your age, I was just like you. Something turned out right, 
I was on the housetops. Everything looked rosy. Turned out wrong. Down in the cellar. Everything pitch black. Then I started to grow up. You know, there's lots of ways you can grow up. You can grow up to be cocky if you get what you want. Or bitter if you don't. And you can grow up to take both success and failure in your stride. That's what I'd like you to do, son. What happens isn't important. What is important is the courage with which you meet it. Anybody can cheer when he wins. When he loses, it takes a big man to pick up the pieces and start all over. I'm sorry, Dad. I guess I was kind of acting like a baby. What do you say we have a little breakfast, huh? That's for me. Thunderhead's leg is well, he's getting restless. He wants to get out. He can't stand being shut up in the corral that way. Haven't been riding him enough lately. I'm just about ready for that board, Kenny. Oh, don't be silly. She looks so cute in it. Oh, it's beautiful. Watch this, too. Look. Bob! What is it, Tim? The albino's raided again. Banner's hurt. Pretty bad. Banner? Oh, Rob. Guys, get the rifles. Kenny, get the medicine kit. Yes. Come on, Tim. We'll saddle the horses. Look out. I know your spirit is dead too, I bet. Yeah. Let's go.
cat mares. Anymore. It's all over now. You and I have to go and find Dad and tell him about the mail. Come on. Come back here. There he is, boss. Ted! Ted! Where have you been? You had me worried to death. Dad, I found the albino. This is where he kept our mares. The albino? Yes, he charged and nearly got me. Well, are you all right? Sure, Thunderhead killed him. There he is. Leave this. The albino, dead. He was a great horse, wasn't he, Dad? One of the greatest. Hey, boss, Thunderhead's driving off the herd. Come on, kid, climb up.
It is. Now let's help you. I can't understand it. Look, where'd all those mares and cows come from? Looks like we're back in business again, thanks to Ken. And Thunderhead. <laughs> and Thunderhead. He saved my life, Mom, by killing the albino. Oh, that means more than if it won a hundred races. <laughs> Dad, what's wrong with him? What's the matter, boy? Dad, he acts like I were a stranger to him. Isn't that Ken? Thunderhead brought the mares here because this has been his home. It's still his home. Don't forget, son. Thunderhead is taking the albino's throne away from him. He's a king now. I'm afraid neither corrals nor fences, no matter how big, can ever hold them again. Oh, son. Easy, boy. Take it easy. Don't you want to stay, Thunderhead? 